Hello everyone, this is the Therapist Gamer here. Today we're going to be taking a look at gaming and depression. The good, the bad, and the ugly. This is part three, the ugly. This is the third in a three-part series about gaming and depression. In our last video, we explored some of the downsides to using gaming as a coping mechanism for dealing with depression. Gaming has lots of upsides and downsides that go along with it, much like any other coping skill or coping mechanism. Today, I want to take a look at something a little more severe, and that's the ugly parts. Not only does gaming have some downsides, but gaming has some severe downsides that can bring severe consequences if they continue for long enough. As I see it, there are three very severe consequences that can occur as a result of gaming when dealing with depression. In this video, we're going to take a look at the absolute worst consequences that could be tied to the use of gaming as a depressed person. Bear in mind, these are the exceptions, not necessarily the rule. But in my experience, these consequences can happen often enough that they are legitimate concerns for depressed gamers. The first of these severe consequences that can happen as a result of using gaming as a coping skill for depression is severe anger. When we're depressed, we have a tendency to over-respond or under-respond to normal levels of stress and frustration. One of these over-responses is increased angry expressions. In other words, temper tantrums. Things like yelling, cursing, throwing controllers, slamming desks and keyboards. You, you've seen it. These are common angry expressions when gaming. There's even a whole YouTube industry based around raging gamers. We, we like watching it. It's entertaining. Um, but it, it's not so great when you're experiencing it or when you're having to live with it. What starts off as letting off steam can often escalate to a point of severity. When we're depressed, we are constantly searching for catharsis. In other words, we want to get these negative emotions out. And one of the ways that we get these negative emotions out is through the use of angry outbursts and expressions of frustration. And gaming offers a perfect place to do that. It may be one of the few places where we can express these emotions without negative consequences. The big problem is that anger is a self-reinforcing emotion. In other words, the more we express it, the more we feel it. The more we feel it, the more we have to express it. The more we express it, the more we feel it. And it's this cycle that just snowballs on itself and it builds and builds and, and eventually we're expressing anger and emotion constantly. Gamers are likely to develop these patterns more quickly since they have a regular place to develop this cycle without fear of significant consequences. Another danger that gamers, depressed gamers are faced with is severe social anxiety. We've discussed the social withdrawal that often happens when we're depressed. The stress avoidant behaviors that are reinforced by the positive emotions we get from our gaming experiences often lead to increased desire to avoid socialization. We start to experience anxiety when away from gaming, and that's the real problem. When we're not gaming, then we start to feel the anxiety again, and that anxiety is only magnified by the fact that we don't have that outlet. We don't have that coping skill at our disposal in the moment. So all we can do is feel the anxiety. And this gets reinforced because as soon as we get back to the game, we don't feel the anxiety anymore. So again, we're caught in a self-reinforcing cycle. This process of self-correction can be severely hindered as a gamer. So we get caught in this cycle of, of anxiety producing more anxiety and Gaming offers a very effective and quick escape, but because gaming is such an escape from the anxiety, we rely on the gaming more and more, and therefore we start to experience anxiety when we're away from the gaming, and that anxiety gets tied to our social interactions and connected to our social interactions, and therefore we we start to relate our social interactions with anxiety and we start to feel anxiety as a result 
Finally, the last uh, severe danger that gamers face is a marked inability to be able to complete basic daily living skills. One of the common symptoms of depression is a decrease in daily functioning. Our hygiene suffers, our diet suffers, our schoolwork suffers, our work suffers. Gaming serves to reinforce Force this decrease in daily functioning because it offers that false sense of completion that we talked about in the last video. We feel like we're accomplishing something. We feel like we're we're functioning really well because oftentimes in the gaming world we are. We we may be very powerful and highly functioning in the gaming world, but the problem is we can't translate that high level of functioning over to the real world so we start to escape to the gaming world more often and because we feel this false sense of com completion and productivity we start to we start to feel really good anytime we've escaped to the gaming world most depressed persons eventually reach a place of understanding that they're headed in a bad direction and they do what's necessary to correct this this process of self-correction can be severely hindered as a gamer. If we're a gamer, we may not pick up on that process of self-correction as quickly as other people will, simply because we have a really effective escape from that, that self-corrective process. We have a way to avoid it, which is to enter into the game worlds, in the games telling us how productive we're being. These positive messages override the warning signs the world tries to send us. Things like bad report cards, bad progress reports at work, loved ones that are complaining and telling us that we need to, you know, get off the video game or get off the computer, spend time with them. All these things are ignored because we have competing evidence that says to the contrary that we're doing okay. In fact, we might be doing great. Eventually, they reach a point where the consequences become too great. The grades have slipped so far that he fails that class. As a result of failing the class, he might fail the grade. As a result of failing the grade, he has to repeat the grade. So he's further behind and more frustrated and more depressed and more guilty. And as a result of feeling more depressed and more guilty, he finds that he's escaping more and more into that game world. This, this process and cycle continues, and eventually the consequences become so great for his inaction that he can't recover from it. That's what I mean by the ugly. All three of these topics we've talked about today have some very serious consequences if they're not taken care of sooner rather than later. If they get to a point where the consequences are too great, you may not be able to recover from those consequences. For most people, depression is a temporary state of being. Even chronic depression sufferers usually learn pretty effective ways to cope with the ongoing depressive symptoms, and they're able to minimize the effects that depression brings. Gamers that use video games as their sole coping mechanism are in danger of suffering consequences that many others won't necessarily face. It's too easy for a depressed adolescent or young adult gamer to fall into a cycle that may become virtually impossible to escape. There's some hope. The depressed gamer has to recognize and admit that, they're, that they may be headed to this dangerous place, and they have to begin looking for help. Getting out of this will take work, and it's likely it can't be done by yourself. It's likely it can't be done alone. You've got to find help, and you've got to find assistance, and you've got to ask for it. Again, the things that I've talked about today are extremes. They're the exceptions rather than the rule, but that doesn't mean that they can't happen. They can happen, and I've seen them happen many times. Don't let yourself, if you're a depressed gamer, become one of these exceptions, because it, it can happen. We're going to talk more and more as, as we go on about how to avoid these things. But for now, the first step is recognizing that this cycle may be beginning and getting yourself some help, asking for it. This has been The Therapist Gamer. Thank you for listening, and I hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.